this fall, the Springfield Diocese will welcome a second Catholic institution of higher learning when Thomas Aquinas College, New England opens in Northfield. Founded in California, Thomas Aquinas will be sending some of its current faculty and students east to be part of this pioneering effort here in Western Massachusetts. We had a crew visit their California campus this spring where we toured and spoke with faculty and students. And Steve Kiltonic reports now on what incoming students and parents can expect. After a nearly three-year process, Thomas Aquinas College, New England, will open its doors in Northfield this August. The Santa Paula, California campus, where Thomas Aquinas College was founded, will send 35 of its current freshman class east, where, as sophomores, they will join 35 new members of the branch's first freshman class. Eight of the faculty will also be making the move. There is much anticipation as Thomas Aquinas will become the second Catholic college in the Springfield Diocese, joining Our Lady of the Elms College in Chicopee. There are obvious differences in both campuses. The students at the beautiful Santa Paula campus enjoy the warm, sunny climate of Southern California, surrounded by primarily Spanish-themed architecture. While the Northfield campus features a traditional New England look and feel, with lots of brick, stone, and unpredictable weather. But weather and architecture aside, there is one constant, the unique Catholic liberal education which defines Thomas Aquinas College will remain unchanged. Several months ago, students, faculty, administrators, and clergy reflected on their California experience and spoke about their hopes and dreams for the New England campus, as well as their expectations for the Northfield community. Michael McLean is the president of Thomas Aquinas College. Uh, our mission statement uh, really does uh, speak of education, as Catholic, of Catholic education, as the process of faith-seeking understanding. So we really take the teachings of the Catholic Church very seriously, and we study very seriously the uh, intellectual tradition of the Catholic Church, uh, philosophy and theology. Unlike most colleges, the curriculum at Thomas Aquinas does not include electives or majors. All students pursue the same course of liberal arts studies over four years. And that has a tremendous advantage because the students are able to talk to one another about their education. They form very close friendships with them, amongst, among themselves and, and with the faculty. And uh, it's just um, a kind of education which uh, permeates the whole community. Paul O'Reilly is the Vice President of Development and an alum of Aquinas. There's a certain intimacy between the faculty and the students. There's not a them and us attitude. So that keeps you young when the students themselves want to chat with you and let you know what's on their minds. I've taught at other schools and so I see, by contrast, uh, the things that make this, this institution and this community stand apart. And one of them is the friendliness, the unity of the community itself. The integrated program of studies includes four years of philosophy, theology, natural science, mathematics, two years of Latin, a year of music, and a course called Seminar, where students read literature and history. John Goyette, the dean of the college, said the great books serve as the foundation on which the entire Aquinas curriculum is based. They are the seminal works of Western civilization's most profound and influential thinkers. So we don't use textbooks, we use uh, primary sources, so our students are really reading what we like to call the great books. Um, so we, so we, we like to say that our, our teachers at the college are really, you know, Plato and Aristotle, you know, St. Augustine, St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, Galileo and Newton, uh, Homer, you know, Dante, uh, Shakespeare. These are really the, the real teachers. Freshmen also have a year to read another great book, the Bible, which is a requirement. The teachers in the classroom are called tutors instead of professors because, said Goyette, they are the conduits to helping students learn from the great minds. All classes incorporate the discussion method, where the tutor asks an opening question, but the students carry the conversation. And so they must possess constant differentiating characteristics. How does that make sense? How can something both be constant and different? All of our students, in a way, have a much greater responsibility for their own learning. Uh, they don't come and listen to a professor lecture to them. They, they in a way, have to prepare well um, and, and really do the bulk of the, of the, of the talking. Um, so they learn from each other. Uh, it helps them read critically. Um, 
to analyze an argument, to learn to, to work with their peers in a conversation. Jean Gaheru and Mary O'Reilly are freshmen who will be packing their bags and heading to Northfield this fall. A native of Brazil, Gaheru offers some advice for next year's freshman class. This education requires a lot of effort, so we have to study and really put ourselves into the program. So we, we have to read the, the readings carefully. So, and for, for that to happen, you can't be <laughs> checking your phone while you're, you're reading. You can't be talking to a friend while you're, you're reading. These distractions uh, take out your time. And the time here is really precious. Since we are a Catholic college, we tend to, to try to, to live this intellectual life with the spiritual life. And the silence is essential for this life of contemplation. Two of O'Reilly's sisters and both parents, including her dad, Paul O'Reilly, graduated from Thomas Aquinas. My first impression was, these people have my back. Like, everyone here is studying the same thing, and I knew it was going to be hard, but I knew that all these people were here to help me. Her message to the incoming class, everything pays off in the end. I tell them it's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. That's what I think they need to know because it really is hard. The stuff we study here is really hard. I mean, Aristotle, you have to read that two or three times, even if it's just one page long, before you actually understand it. And once you understand what, say, Aristotle is trying to say, everything makes sense. It all makes sense and you feel smart. Like, I've never felt smart before, but after discussing these things and figuring out what Aristotle, who's one of the greatest thinkers of all time, had intended, that feeling is so powerful. O'Reilly believes that having rules and regulations helps to facilitate learning, although she wasn't sold at first. When I was applying to TAC, I was like, no, there's so many rules, I would never be able to go through with this. But actually, I have really loved having the rules. Say, like curfew, you have to be in your dorms by 11, you get a good night's sleep, you come to school and you're ready to um, discuss. There's also a mandatory dress code and a formality used when speaking. I think it's really important because it makes this community more professional. We all have, the girls have to be in skirts, the guys have to be, I think, in collar shirts for class. But it is really professional. And again, we use, in the classroom, we use miss or mister when we address each other. Faith plays an important role in the student's everyday life. Messes are held four times a day to accommodate the students' schedules. Father Paul Raftery is one of four chaplains in Palo Alto. Uh, we have confessions before and after each Mass. Um, we have uh, Eucharistic adoration each day, uh, followed by benediction. Um, once a month we have um, all-night Eucharistic adoration uh, for the first Friday. So there's a rich spiritual life on campus uh, that, uh, that really um, uh, students are able to appreciate and to uh, to be part of. The Center for Spiritual Life at Northfield will be the historic 110-year-old Sage Chapel. It's a great privilege to, to be here um, working with these young people and uh, knowing that I'm doing um, something which is really crucial to their spiritual development by offering the sacraments and, and uh, spiritual guidance. About 10 percent go off to priesthood or religious life. So, so that's a testimony to um, the, uh, the, the benefit of having us priests with um, the students on a daily basis. But despite the heavy academic load, there is time for students to relax, have fun, and just enjoy their surroundings. We love practicing sports and doing fun, fun things. We, we go hiking, we play soccer. Most people here work out in very different ways. Everyone is very active, and we are really looking forward to engaging the community that we're going to be in. Personally, I enjoy the weather here, <laughs> so I'm not going there for, for this reason, but I'm pretty sure that that's something that's, that's going to be very interesting and a good experience for, for sure. Yeah. I'm really excited to be a part of the community out in Massachusetts. I've never actually been on the East Coast, but I hear great things about it. I love this education so much. I love this place, and I really want to make that more available to people. So I'm really excited to be able to share this with the Massachusetts. President McLean urges students and families to stop by the Northfield campus. If you come and visit uh, by, uh, by August, you'll see a, a, a lively group of students uh, who are uh, going to be happy to be there. 
they're going to be engaged in their education. They're going to be enjoying the, uh, the academic and social and spiritual life that we're going to provide. Everyone is looking forward to August 24th, which is Convocation Day and the opening Mass on the Northfield campus. Springfield Bishop Mitchell Brozanski, who, said McLean, has supported this effort from the beginning, will be the principal celebrant of the Mass. The first day of classes is August 26th. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic.